This is Brandy DeQuinn reporting live from a very sad, depressing murder investigation here. You know, we knew about this first. It's 5 p.m. here now in Reno, Nevada. Do we knew about this at 11 a.m.? We could have brought you this coverage way, way earlier than the rest of the stations. But guess what? We are LoadedTV.com, and we're all about happy fun news. Thank you for watching and staying loyal, loyal viewers of LoadedTV.com, because that's what we're here for, to make you smile, not cry. So, <laughs> I'm going to sit on my feet here. That's a good one. You know, it's so funny because... When we were leaving the Bonanza this morning, or yesterday morning, I saw all that yeah. going down. So I was like, what's going on over there? Yeah, we saw that, and there was no news station there. And we're like, should we pull up? Should we stop? We could, yeah, we could totally. We'll be first on the scene. And we're like, no. And then we came back here at 3 or 5 or whatever, and then then all the news stations were here. And we're right. Like, well, what do we do? We have to do something. We're like, all right. Let's tell them what we're really about. That's what. What's so funny, though, too, is that um, I hear a lot of stories from, on the news, like, five days later sometimes of ones that we've done. Like, on yeah. big news stations, like Good, like Good Morning, Morning America. America. Yeah. Or, um, or Chelsea Lately. Yeah. So, sometimes I see them on, um, like, The Daily with show with Jon Stewart. So maybe like they're that. watching our show and, like, getting, like, ideas. What do you think? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. All right. You are watching The Wake Up Call here on LoadedTV.com. Uh, we're streaming to you live from Reno, Nevada. We're so glad that you decided to join us. want to remind you, if you um, have an inclination to come down, you certainly can. We're here live uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. It's kind of cool. Good morning. Oh, you guys, let us know for too short and if we need our booster seats. Cause we I feel like we need our booster seats. I, I feel like we need our booster seats, We'll too. have to do it <laughs> later. So if we, we'll get our booster seats next, and then we'll sit on them. So let us know. <laughs> you can only see our face. <laughs> so silly. Um, uh, Dave is not here today, but he will be back tomorrow. We have Oscar tomorrow. But on the show today, Tech with... Um, Ken. Ken. <laughs> Mr. Ken, we love him. Um, I'm going to show an art piece that I did at the Discovery Museum. And wait till you get this. Uh, we have an exclusive interview with Jerry Mathers. Do you know who? Or is it Mavers? No, I don't Mathers. Know. Do you guys know? Yeah, it's Mathers. Well, he's Leave It to Beaver. He is the Beaver, and I love Leave It to Beaver. Um, so we have an exclusive interview with him and then some great events. <laughs> I've been saying Mavers the whole time. No, Jerry Mathers. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, he's, you know the bees, like the little boy from... Yeah, he's super cute. So Tony he's said he did the interview with him. Yeah. So okay. you guys will see that. Uh, he's, like, interviewing their inter... And then uh, events, of course. Yeah. Well, we like to do... Uh, hello from Russia. Yes, hello. Actually, I wonder if I have my Russian... Do I have our news... Oh, I don't. Um, okay, so we like to do some news in the very beginning of the show. Some little, leave it to Beaver. Yes, Steve, yes, it's leave it to Beaver. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the Super Bowl, and we're going to talk about cheerleading and oh, a bunch good. of different I things. Oh, good, I So, okay, the entertainment lineup for the Super Bowl is sick. It is huge. First of all, I'm just going to go through because I, I want to get to some other things. But first of all, Justin Timberlake is going to give his first ma major musical performance in four years, you guys. Stevie Wonder is going to be performing outside in it for everybody. CeeLo Green is going to reunite with his old hip-hop, um, the Goody Mob. Rascal Flatts is teaming up with Journey for a Rascal concert. Rascal Flatts right. and Journey? Then you've got Beyonce and Jay-Z. That's not, this is, okay, it just does more no, and more and more. No, it's Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, too. <laughs> I don't know. I hate them. Um, Little Wayne is throwing a big bash in his hometown. Jay-Z, they're doing a whole thing at halftime. Um, Jamie Foxx is giving a private concert. Um, the, uh, so the big one actually is, is the Justin Timberlake. They have more though. There's more. Um, Stevie Wonder will be performing at the uh, Hall of Rock, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They're going to have The Roots, um, Matchbox the Roots. 20. Yeah. One Republic. I love them. They're so awesome. Um, they're going to have... Um, Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Train is going to be performing. Oh my goodness. Fantasia, that girl from yeah. uh, American Idol. They're going to have. I heard she couldn't read. Oh my god. <laughs> Just a random fact. But I, so I huge she... amount. A, a sure. big thing of gospel. They're going to have the gospel um, singers for a gospel celebration. Pitbull has some scheduled um, mm. things. Um, Nick Cannon. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Snoop Dogg. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's huge, you guys. So. Wow. That yeah. was. Huge, huge. I know. You said Justin Timberlake, right? He's the big, big one besides Beyonce. 
Okay, and then last time Justin Timberlake performed, we all know. Oh my gosh. Nipplegate. Nip slip. That's what they were calling it, Nipplegate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys think that was real or fake? And they actually hired Justin Timberlake back. Yeah, and they're excited because, I mean, they didn't really, they're kind of downplaying it. They're not really uh -huh. saying, you know what I mean? They're not doing Jeff it. thinks you should be performing. I should, too. Thank you. Right? Thank you. so sick. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't even know what I do. Okay, so I have a follow-up cheerleader story. Yeah, okay, this is awesome. Okay, a picture of this. Um, so, there's a Ravens cheerleader. Um, supposedly, according to her... Yeah, I want to see the pictures. She was kicked off of the Super Bowl performance for being too fat. Yikes. Um, so she's seeking a petition to help her perform. Uh, she's gained weight. Um, they have told her, quote unquote, this has been a tough year for her. They told her to seek a nutritionist and a therapist all at her her own expense. So we have like a chubbier, I guess, quote unquote, chubbier picture of her and then one when she was more in fit like more fit I guess but okay so which comes first so it's like this is, is this her the chubby now, one I like, told them what we're seeing but um so, so what this is, is her this is the chubby one okay the one that you were seeing there's two different ones up there, oh, but, um, oh. so what do you guys think should is there a weight limit she's she's been with she has seniority she's been with the Ravens since she was 18 years old I mean she do you could, know how old she is she now? could be 22 now or 21 who knows oh, okay. but but um she has seniority well, and uh, but I think personally, I'm not. When you sign up to be a cheerleader right. or, or something, you know what you're signing up for. But again, but but on the other side of that, I think that we need to show people as they really are, as opposed to some. You know, because it's funny. We, we, I don't know. I think she's very she pretty girl, very, she's and very I, pretty. you know, maybe if she was. You know, so like I think there's 50 um, cheerleaders and they only picked 32 or something, and she wasn't one of them. Oh, and she thinks so she, she kicked off the team, or she just didn't. Well, she said Super she Bowl. was quitting after this season anyway. Oh, because they were mad that she got a. I don't know, but so what do you guys think? Well, we're getting a lot. I mean, you know, people are saying she's very, very pretty, um, and I agree. And I think that did you put up the other ones to her, up the skinnier one too? So I mean, I just feel like it's. Some, you know what they were saying is that most guys, most men, Prefer really the, like her. women who are a little bit more curvy as opposed to like really, really skinny. Um, have you ever seen any of the models on like the runway, like the high fashion models? Oh, yeah. They're skinny. Oh, my God. I've heard stories <laughs> They're where they would real take cotton balls and like some thing flavored, like some juice, and eat them to fill them That's up. gross. It can't so be right like for you. No calories or something. I yeah. heard that. Isn't that crazy? So yeah. I think we. Need, I think is. I think you're right that you know when you go into a job where they require that, where you're going to be. Let's say they say you're a bikini model, right? Yeah. And they're like, okay, well, you're kind of getting a little hefto or whatever. Kay Upton. Do you know who she is? Mm. She's an example of a very curvaceous bikini model, and um, she was supposed to have a Super Bowl commercial. Mm -hmm. And actually, she's not anymore because it was too risque. Oh, woo! So Kate Upton's a really pop. Yeah, I mean, I I applaud that, and I think we should show that you know everybody, contract or no. And you know what? She is really pretty. So maybe you know, maybe they should just make an exception. But whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's her last season, and you don't want a bad rep with the Ravens for saying, oh, she's too. Yeah, it's kind of it's, it's and telling her that she needs to go get therapy. I don't know. Maybe they need to go get therapy. Just yesterday. This is kind of funny. I was telling, talking about Stuart, how I wanted to hit the gym, and he goes, guys like <laughs> girls with a little bit of meat on their bones, but but you want to hear it from other girls, but not from a guy, I think. I don't know. Well, okay, but okay, okay, <laughs> so here's like, the thing. Was that, that a compliment? Okay, well, wait a minute. <laughs> so, I, I think, um, you know, so what are we, who are we dressing for? Are we dressing for each other or for, real, for guys? I mean, I don't know. You know, are we dressing up to... I want, I want uh, to feel comfortable in a bikini. I want to go to the beach and be like... Sure, sure. Not have to worry about sucking in my stomach. Right. Type thing. Okay. So I, I would say for myself. Okay. Well, then that's that's perfect. That's good. I just don't want to... Uh, suck it in, but <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> All right. Um, so speaking of the Super Bowl, we were going to talk a little bit about... I. You guys know that these two brothers, coaches, are competing against each other... 
in the Super Bowl. And Stuart was asking, well, who, what do the parents do? You know, what do you do when one of your, both of your children are in this, I mean, this is the biggest thing ever, really. And who do you root for? Both yeah, of them. Yeah, I think both of them. They're both, they're excited that they're both there. Yeah. And Stuart was like, do they split the jersey in half? Right. For each team. Does one mom, does the mom sit on one side and, uh, you know, I mean. Well, I, I think just, they have a skybox. I'm sure they do. <laughs> or something. Did you, okay, so this, oh, let's talk about sibling, sibling rivalry. So did you oh, ever yeah. have any of that? Well, my, my sister closest to my age is six years younger. So oh, okay. not really. Yeah. Not really, no, because our, our age gap is so far apart. Yeah. I always, my sister had the, my only thing for me was that I was really involved in, like, I mean, you know, it was like, not for nothing, but like the lead in every school, you know, all the musicals, and I sang at all the games, and I was high, you know, I did a lot. I got to travel a lot, singing and, and doing acting, and so my when my sister's four years younger than me, so when my sister got into high school, I was already gone. Oh, yeah, so four years. So right. But people really, like, put a lot of pressure on her to be like me. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Actually. My sister wrote me a birthday card once and says, I want to be just like you when I grow up. And then her freshman year, she tried to be like a cheerleader. Yeah. She mm -hmm. tried to follow in my footsteps, but it wasn't for her. Right. And that's the same way with my sister. I mean, she just wasn't, it wasn't for her. My sister is, I'm really out there. I'm like, ah, you know, constantly in the spotlight. And that's what I like. And she's so, like, back. You know what I mean? I she do know. That, I do know what you mean. I feel like I'm more back. Oh really? And I'm more shy. But I, I was always a cheerleader in a theater and in the spotlight. Which yeah. Is weird because I'm the shy one and she just doesn't give a right. Mind <laughs> <and> you know what? <laughs> so yeah, we're definitely. So Stuart says he looked up to his sisters. They were six years older than me, but always wanted to be doing what they were doing. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. As the older, I just. But I felt bad for my sister that people always compared her to me. I think that's the case with yeah. my sister as well. Yeah, and so then she, you know, but she's not, and I never, we never have had like a rivalry or anything, but yeah. I do feel bad because they were like, well, let's see what you can do kind of a thing. And I'm like, I well, but she's different, you know. I definitely agree, yeah, so in that aspect, yes. I can huh. completely relate. All right. Well, we'll have to Jeez. see how it plays out with the two coaches um, of the Ravens and the 49ers competing in the biggest, one of the biggest game. I mean, it's the biggest sporting event ever. All right. What else we got? Um, okay. So you had some kind of sad story, right? I have a little bit of a sad story. You're not a sad. Well, oh, a yes. Little a bit. little bit. Now, I really love, I because I grew up. Not that sad. So Patty, oh you, I don't know if you guys know who the Andrews sisters are. And. So Patty Andrews, she was the last surviving member of the Andrews sisters. She died uh, yesterday at age 94. She was uh, in the American singing trio whose 40s hits are associated mostly with the World War, Second World War. So they did all that. She died of natural causes in Los Angeles. She was the youngest sister and the lead singer of the group. And she did like Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. They did Rum and Coca-Cola. They were born in Minnesota. There's a song called Rum and Coca-Cola? Yes, it's a great song. Um, and uh, they performed, during World War II, they performed a lot overseas for the troops, a lot. They were, they were in Africa and Italy. Um, and uh, they recorded over more than 400 songs and had sold more than 75 million records by the mid-70s. They were inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame. Um, so Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy is their biggest one. Um, so oh, we're so going to see a little, them? yeah, we're just going to see a little clip of them doing Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. And we want to do a little memorial tribute to um, Patty. And Stella just found out because of you. So that's well, there's your video? Yeah, so that's the Andrew Sisters. I used to do, um, a, a couple times I've done Andrew Sisters tributes, like, and so we'll, you know, we would go out and sing and stuff. It's just, it's really, I... As a singer, I really love their really tight harmonies. Um, and so she's passed away. So that's the end of an era. And a lot of uh, the World War II vets and people that she were was around. She like, what, 90? She was 94. So she lived a good life. She, was, she had a good sure. life. That's for sure, yeah. All right, some other. Jeremy. Oh, does Stuart's mom know who she was? We'll ask Mrs. Campbell. I'm sure that she knows who the ancestors are. And then Ron Jeremy's. 
a little bit sad, but he's a porn star, so, you know. <laughs> he hasn't been for so a long he, time, but. Um, He's in critical condition with a heart aneurysm in California. We don't do sad news. Wow. But, I wonder how old he is. But since he's a porn star and I talk about porn stuff all the time, we do Mustang After well, Dark on Thursday nights. I figure it tied in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's, that is sad. But yes, I mean, someone passing away at 94. I mean, she had, those people have long legs. We just like to do little tributes to people. All right. I want to hear about the Barbie. You want to hear about Barbie? Barbie okay. World. So I'm I'm Barbie girl. I have a picture of Barbie as well. Um, Okay, I, I've showed you guys and talked to you guys about real life Barbie and the real life Kendall. So they they met up together doing a photo shoot in New York. They finally met up. Yeah. But the real life Kendall has had 90 surgeries to make himself look like Kendall. Okay. <laughs> and the 20, I'm sorry, I'm I just like the real life Barbie. Wow. She's only 20 something years old. She's you. Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. She's only had one surgery, and oh, that really? is the boobs. She naturally has the wide eyes and the the lips and the nose huh. and the tiny waist. But the bigger your boobs are, the tinier your waist looks anyway. So she got the right. That's the only augmentation she got. But the Ken doll was saying that he didn't think the Ken doll, the Ken doll was saying she, he didn't find the Barbie doll attractive because she looks like a transvestite or a drag queen or something. Mm. But. <laughs> what kind of story is this? I know. But, the, but then the Barbie doll comes to say, you know what, like you had 90 surgeries and I only had one, my, one, my boob. So, you know, who are you to talk? <laughs> Let me see the picture. Um, I've seen a lot of these people, you know, I... Oh yeah, Megan agrees it looks like a dude. Oh. It, she looks like a Japanese, like, the anime. anime. characters. But yeah, the only things apparently that she only got done is the boobs. But yeah, when I was 20 she's something, my waist used to be really small too. <laughs> right. But um, she she, she does look like a Barbie doll. But the freakiest one is the. She kid. looks like an anime. She's she Japanese really does. anime to me. The freakiest one though is Ken. 90 surgeries. 90 got, surgeries. Like, pec implants and pectoral and butt implants and bicep implants and he's like, why work out? I wonder if um, you could just get the surgery. Right. I wonder, I want to see if he got, did, did he get any to his jaw, probably. He did so Because no. Ken has that, like, hard jaw, right? But her quote is, um, she said she's very pleased with her look, and she says the doll is an image of an ideal woman, and that nobody, yeah. would, nobody would mind being compared to a doll. True. But the thing is, you know that they said if they, that if you took the dimensions of Barbie doll in real life, yeah. you, she would be, like, 10 feet tall. And like, like, yeah, it like a not, 21 inch waist, or wait, maybe it's 19 inch right. waist. Right, and like and she'd have to be like around boobies. Yeah, and she'd probably fall over or something like that. So many people try to have surgeries to look like her, and I don't know why. Be healthy. That be girl happy. does look a good amount like her, though. She does. Do you really think she's, she's only had kind one of surgery? Like, she's got the really big eyes and like the the narrow face and chin, though. You know. I don't think. She looks like yeah, Japanese anime. She things. really does. She's huh. cute. She is cute. One surgery. Yeah, that's probably maybe. She's a natural bar barb. Oh, we're gonna pose for a oh picture. Can you take another one, please? Pause. <laughs> 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 oh my like god. Oh, you okay? Photo bomb. All right. Oh, we only have. Okay. We only have a couple minutes. Sure. Put that goat picture in. Yeah, because mine's not that great. The goat robbery picture. Goat robbery. Okay, you guys. There's this goat. Here, I'll, I'll look. A goat accused of robbery. Oh, police, in Nigeria. <laughs> police in Nigeria are holding a goat on suspicion of attempted armed robbery. Wow. Um, so they what? seized the black and white goat, saying it was an armed robber who had used black magic oh to transform God. himself into an animal to escape after trying to steal a Mazda 323. <laughs> wow. A spokesman for the police in the eastern state said the goat is in our custody. Um, wow. Someone saw some hoodlums attempting to rob a car. One escaped while the other turned into a goat. They escaped while one turned into a goat. What do you guys think of this? I'm Is this they, a real story, Ben? Like, I'm glad they no. caught the goat and he's in custody now. Bad goat. Shame on you. <laughs> now they have to feed this stupid thing. 
or they might eat it. No, um, goats like eat anything. They'll eat like shoes. And yeah. Stuff. Um, <laughs> the goat is in our custody. Well, they're not doing themselves any favors in Nigeria by this. But you know what? Some people. See, they believe, you know why? Because they believe in like black magic and Santeria and voodoo and stuff. See, that's why I'm not a hundred percent sure, you guys, if this is real. But they do believe in voodoo and black magic yeah. and stuff in Nigeria. So, I mean, it, there's a newspaper clipping. I mean, I don't know what you guys think was real or not. I just thought it was absolutely hilarious. I'm gonna I use that. You guys should know this. <laughs> it was the goat that did it, not me. I wasn't there. Oh, we made sound like All right, that is funny. I think we got to get on out of here. Uh, we have Tech coming up with um, Ken um, and an interview with Jerry Mathers from Leave It to Beaver and a quick little uh, thing that I did at the Discovery Museum about kids' art. Boris says he did not understand. <laughs> Boris, they arrested okay, a Boris. goat. We're crazy they Americans. Think he robbed a Mazda 323. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're going to get on out of here and go quick into a break. Don't forget, you can come see us live anytime here, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., and we'll explain to you what's going on. All right, we'll be right back on the Wake Up Call. Oh, my. And welcome back. You're watching LoadedTV.com. This is the Wake Up Call. I'm Ken McKim with your Tech Bytes update. So, anyone who's seen this show regularly knows that I love all things technology related, or most of them anyway. Um, but I like to bring you stories about pieces of technology, apps, whatever, that actually improve people's quality of life more so than just making it easier for them to download the latest version of Angry Birds. So there's a couple that I, I ran into on the App Store specifically made for uh, people who have lost a significant amount of their vision or are altogether blind. And they're both made by a company called Looktel. L-O-O-K-T-E-L. -O Not the most original of names, but very good products notwithstanding. The first one is the Look Tell Money Reader and it does just what it says. It reads money out loud so you can tell what bills you have in your hand. It's fantastic. You just put the bill in front of the camera and this works for iPhone or iPad or iPod Touch and it'll tell you. It'll say one dollar, ten dollars, twenty dollars, whatever it is. The best part about it is it doesn't require any kind of internet connectivity to work. It's all self-contained, the database that it uses to compare against. So you can use it anywhere at any time and it works with not just US currency but a bunch of different world denominations uh, including the euro and the English pound. So very versatile. Uh, I think it's brilliant. You don't even have to get a perfect picture because really, if, if your vision's that bad, what are the odds you're going to be able to capture a really good picture of it? Um, and it's instantaneous feedback. It's not like you take the picture, you wait, and then you wait, and then it tells you. It just happens instantaneously. So I thought that was very cool. Uh, the next one, same company, is called the uh, Looktel Recognizer. And it basically recognizes household products now. Uh, I think it has a built-in database and then you can of course expand on that and have someone help you take pictures of things around your house. And then again you have the app running and you just point it at the object, whatever it is, whether it's a jar of peanut butter or Ritz crackers or you know, whatever, but you point it at it and it will tell you what it is. So you know what you're looking at. Fantastic. I love this. This is the kind of stuff that really gets me excited. It's not just another version of Angry Birds or it's not just an, another way to download music faster or watch your Netflix, but it's technology really making a difference in people's lives. And like the story I did a couple weeks ago on the magnets that are being used to help destroy cancer cells. 
this is what gets me excited about living in the day and age that I do because medical science is a wonderful thing and technology is a wonderful thing and when you can combine the two of those effectively to actually help people that's a good day I think that's amazing so when I run across things like that I want to share them with you so that you too can be amazed and awed at what we can do there you go um, <laughs> kind of a short one today, but please don't go anywhere because The Wake Up Call has many more great stories just ahead for you. As always, if you have any questions, you can send them to me, ken at loadedtv.com, or uh, follow me on Twitter, at wakeupcalltech, and I answer questions over there, too, so lots of ways to get in touch with me. Stick around, though, like I said, a lot more great stories coming up, so until next time, I'm Ken McKim, and you take care. Good morning, I'm Natalie Jones. You're watching The Wake Up Call here on LoadedTV.com and I have the pleasure of getting a visit this morning at the Discovery Children's Museum in Reno, Nevada, located on Center Street. And here with me I have the marketing director. His name is Patrick Stewart. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, I'm excited. So I wanted to ask you some questions about how the museum came into being, where it's going, because um, I know there's lots of history that's going on with this, so tell me about it. Fundraising for the museum began in 2004, and it was the brainchild of a local guy by the name of Chris Reich, who decided that the market could probably use a museum like this, mm -hmm. did some research, funded a feasibility study with his own money, started a small board, and uh, the rest is history. Fundraising took about seven years. And how long have you been at this location? Uh, we opened our doors on September 10th, 2010. Wow, so a few years now. Sorry, 2011, 11. sorry. Okay, yeah. so just a little while, and it's been so successful. Right, yeah, we've had over 180,000 people through the doors so far. Um, we projected about 2,000 member families in the first year, and we're up over 6,000 now, so uh, a lot of support in the community for, for the museum. That. Well, Nevada really needed, well, specifically Reno, something like this. And I want to tell you, we're in this beautiful light-filled space, which also has some history of its own. Tell me about that. Yeah, the building is uh, the former Reno City Hall. The whole, the whole building is 67,000 square feet. The only addition we made is the lobby, which is what we're standing in. Yeah, it's Big nice. two-story glass structure. <clears throat> um, so also I want to tell you one of the things that I you know I've been I've been here a couple times with my niece and nephews and I also had the chance to walk around and I think it's just so delightful to see just these little tiny humans and how they truly discover and interact with each other I think that for me is the best part right then that's the idea is is discovery learning not just for kids but for families mm -hmm. we want the parents to interact and um, so far it's worked really well people are getting the hang of, of the idea that kids and can come here with their families and sort of lead the learning experience yeah, they, right. they they guide the their, yeah. themselves to the museum and the parents can just kind of go along and encourage them to explore and learn things themselves of course we hear all the time from parents that they leave with some piece of knowledge or lots of pieces of knowledge that they didn't have when they came yeah what I like about the museum too is it's very Nevada centric and I think that's really important because you could have gone a completely different direction Absolutely. but you guys really focus in on the uh, uniqueness of this area mm -hmm. it's contextual to northern Nevada we always say you couldn't take this museum and plunk it down in any right. other city and have it make sense and that's by design we didn't want this to be an off-the-shelf experience that you could get anywhere else we wanted this to be a sense of pride for our for our community and our region but also a good representation for tourists of, of who we are as a state and how we got yeah. here and learning themselves so talk about a little bit about the admission when you're open and where people can find out more information admission is eight dollars per person kids under age one are free um, our membership started $85 a year, and that's unlimited admission all year long for everyone in the yeah, family. Yeah, kids love it too. They right. want to come back. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. You'll want to be here more than one time. Yeah. Uh, we're located right downtown, just south of, of sort of the downtown, downtown core on mm -hmm. Center Street. It's 490 South Center, right at the corner of Center and Liberty. Mm -hmm. The best place to find out anything about what's going on around here is on our website, which is nvdm.org. Okay. Or you can always give us a call at 786-1000. 
Awesome. So check out the website. Um, it's, it's a great fun. And you're going to get to see so much of this museum in the next few days because we're going to be here. We're going to be bugging this guy forever. No, we're going to get to see everything. We're going inside. Stick with us. You're watching The Wake Up Call. We'll be right back. Tons and tons of content because they just have so much going on. So It is super fun. If you haven't been there yet, make a plan to go. The weather here in Reno is supposed to be so this amazing week, yeah. this whole week including weekends. So you guys make plans to go out and have some fun, get some vitamin D3 from the sunshine. That's right. We haven't had it. It's been so cold. Hey, really quickly, we're going to go into um, a interview with Jerry Mathers, but I wanted to remind you guys that there's the Super Bowl parties that they're pulling out all over town are pretty amazing, but specifically at the Bonanza. So they're going to have hot seat drawings. And I had to ask, do you know what a hot seat drawing is? What is it? It's where, when you're on the seat, they buzz you. No, I'm kidding. Um, and then it gets really hot. And, and you go, jump. whoa! No. Um, <laughs> if you're playing, <laughs> if you're playing, then every 15 minutes they pick somebody that's playing randomly and they give you $50 worth of um, play. I'm Ooh. sorry, I just spit on you. Um, and they're also going to be having Budweiser's for a dollar. You guys, that is like the best deal all over. I looked at all of these and that's the best deal. Wow, a dollar. If, you are, if you're a member of their Fort Reno, then you're going to get free drinks and appetizers in the bar. And Wait, it, free drinks and yes. free appetizers. Yes, but you have to be a member of the of the Fort Reno. And it's easy to become a member. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Up, I think. Um, yeah. And you also get a drawing, entry into a drawing for a 46 high definition television taking place at the end of the game. So you guys get down here to the Bonanza Casino. That's going to be from 3 to 8 p.m. on Sunday. What are you guys doing for Super Bowl? How many of you out there that don't live in America know what Super Bowl is? <laughs> When Oscar and Rick were doing the comedian skit um, Party. Uh, yesterday, yeah, some people were asking, what is Super Bowl? Yeah. And it's, we were saying it's like the World <sighs> Cup, like soccer. Right, like yeah. It's weird. <laughs> it's like we, it's like we kind of, uh, Americans love football. They love football. And so it's the end, it's the big championship game when they've all played and played and played for the whole season. And then it's the, yeah. Ian says he's going to Friends. Stuart. Triple X is says good morning. James is gonna party. Oh See, the God. bad thing is you have to go to work the and next day. And it's Tivo's birthday. So it is drinking apparently. Um, Stuart said that rugby is better than football. So every time I'm I'm watching football, he's trying to get me to watch rugby on YouTube. Really, Stuart? <laughs> yeah. When I'm in like, Rome, dude. Yeah, I'm like you're in America now, Stuart. <laughs> Super Bowl is really fun. It's in his blood. Yeah, he's never been, so it'll be fun. Are you guys going to Candy's? We're thinking about going to Candy. Yeah. I'm trying to talk my girlfriends into going. Yeah, that it's really fun. And, you know, you just kind of do the food and drink and men get obnoxious. And, and probably the girls get just as obnoxious. Yeah, not quite so much. No. <laughs> they just get really rowdy. Yeah, they're screaming. But that's a fun atmosphere to be in is screaming fans and everybody jumping up and cheering. <laughs> All right. All right, so let us know what you're going to be doing for the Super Bowl. Um, but we are going to go to an um, interview that was done by Tony Suddy here in Reno, Nevada. And it is with Jerry Mathers of Leave It to Beaver. This is pretty cool. I'm excited. We are so excited to be able to spend the evening with Mathers tonight and share it with you exclusively on TV.com. Jerry, welcome to Reno. Pleasure to be here. We're going to have fun. We are going to have a great time. And I know that you're going to be able to... Stuart to, to kind of hang out and find out about Jerry here um, at our session for the Integrity Jack Davis Food Pantry. Tell us a little bit about how you started in the business. Well, my mom at uh, was from Minnesota. My dad was from Iowa. My dad had moved out here under the GI Bill because um, he was a bomber pilot during World War II and flew 25 to Germany. And so they decided to settle out here. So I was born in Iowa, but came out here, and my dad became a teacher and coach, and they had a lot of money, and so my mom was shopping at a department store, and a lady came up to her and said, your little boy fits your old clothes perfectly, could he be a model for us? And this was in L.A. County, right? This is in L.A., uh -huh. but at that time everything was on film, and television was just really starting. This was 1951. And so there weren't really any television actors because it wasn't on film, it was all live. Right. And my, my mom said, gee, you know, I, I don't know. But yes, he could probably, he could probably do that because she said we'd, he, we'd pay him and he could keep the clothes. Oh my goodness. And my mom went, oh, that sounds good. 
But there weren't any actors that were small children because everything was on film. On film, if you make a mistake, you go back and redo it. With live TV, you couldn't do that. So what they found was the only people that were used to working in front of a live audience were the models. Mm -hmm. And so I started at two years old doing the Ed Wynn Show. Mm -hmm. I did uh, pet milk commercials. I was dressed in cowboy boots, six guns, a cowboy hat, and diapers. And I would walk through a swinging door that looked like a bar room with all these stuntmen fighting and breaking chairs over each other. And I'd walk up to the bar, and one of the cowboys would pick me up and set me on the bar. And um, I would say, I'm the toughest hombre in these parts, and you better have my brand. And Ed Wynn would do a commercial for Pet Milk. And that's how I started. Two years old he started. On live TV. Now, you started uh, working on Leave to Beaver, what, at six? No, actually about, well, I did, I did the pilot at about six, but it, I didn't actually start doing Leave it to Beaver until about seven on the day. Did you know there were 5,000 auditioners for Leave it to Beaver? That's right. And out of that, you were one of the top five. That's right. Yeah, and ultimately, he yeah. won the role. Yeah. And you know, I, I learned a bit of trivia about you today. Uh -oh. um, he went to the callback, the final callback, right, Jerry? That's right. And tell them what happened in that callback. I thought that was inspiring. Well, I had just joined the Cub Scouts, and it was my very first meeting. And we had gone on the, the Leave it to Beaver being 5,000 people. They went in, and they, they, it wasn't just for the Beaver. It was for all the different characters. So they'd line you up, and they'd say, okay, these two look like brothers. This guy maybe could play that Eddie Haskell part. This could play the Lumpy part. And, but there were about 5,000 just for the Beaver part. And we went on that interview for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I liked going on interviews, but this one was getting a little old. And I had just joined the Cub Scouts, and I had my very first Cub Scout meeting. And I was going to it, and all of a sudden my mom said, oh, we got a call back. And I said, well, I can't go, Mom. I've got a Cub Scout meeting. And she said, well, it's not like that, but like it was before. There's only going to be about five people on the interview, and you'll go right in, and they just want to have you read a few lines and just take one last look at you. And I said, well, I can't do that. I've got to be at my first Cub Scout meeting. She said, you know what? Your Cub Scout meeting isn't until like a two or three hours after school. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to go to the thing, and then we'll go to your meeting. Well, I got there, and since it was the last interview, they took everyone else first, and they spent a lot of time with them because they were looking for a person that they were going to be working with probably for a long time. And so by the time I got in there, I was really afraid I was going to be late. I don't like to be late. And so I was very jittery, and they noticed that because they knew me pretty well. And they said, Jerry, what's the matter? And I said, well, I really don't want to be here because I have a Cub Scout meeting. And they said, all right. At the callback? At the callback. <laughs> and they said, all right, well, you can go. So I walked in and walked out. And my mom said, what happened, Jerry? I said, well, they asked me if I wanted to be here. I said, no, I had to go to my Cub Scout meeting. And they said, go ahead. She said, that probably wasn't the best thing to tell them. But they did call back that night and say, I have the job as the beaver in a new series called Leave it to Beaver because they'd rather have a kid that wanted to go to a Cub Scout meeting than be an actor. That's how I got the job. You know, I'm going to have to teach that to my talent. It doesn't always work. <laughs> you know, tonight we're not only going to talk about Jerry's life in film, but we're going to talk about what it's like as a child star and, and accumulating. Ac, ac, how do you say that, Stuart? Uh, well, anyway, how you kind of go from child star to teen star and then into adult acting. How was that transition for you? Um, Acclimating. Acclimating. Very good. Uh, actually, it was very good because I basically um, walked away from the industry when Leave it to Beaver ended when I was a teenager. Now, it wasn't that I didn't like to work, but I wanted to go to regular school because I'd had a private tutor since the first grade. So I had never been in school with anyone else. Now, when other people came in to be like in a schoolroom scene or one of the other people, then they would be in with me but they will probably only be there maybe one day. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to go to a regular school. You were a, a very athletic kid. That's right, I wanted to play sports. My dad was a coach. He ended up as a superintendent at LAC schools, but he had been a coach, so sports were very important to me. I wanted to play football. I, wanted, I was on the swimming team and the track team. So um, I did work, but only when it suited my uh, agenda. So I'd work on it during the summer. Well, there weren't a whole lot of series and things. So I kind of walked away from it for a few years and didn't get back to it until uh, after I was almost uh, about 29. You even got involved, I think, if I remember correctly, in real estate. I was a real estate. I was a commercial real estate. I was also a bank officer. I was a commercial loan officer. I took the um, money from Leave it to Beaver and put myself through Berkeley. Wow. And while I was doing that, um, 
the banker said, well, what are you going to do? And I was actually going to go to law school. And he said, well, you can go to law school and you'll learn all about the law. But when you graduate, the day you get your diploma, if you want to come, you can work and I'll make you a bank officer within six months. And you'll know more about money than anyone else because everyone has to deal with the bank. Look at all of these things we're going to be learning about tonight, Stuart. I'm so excited. This is just the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, feel free to hang out with us if you're able to. Load a TV and hopefully we can stream this and all of you can enjoy and learn from the beef. Yeah, Jerry Mathers and as the beaver. I know. Um, I was calling him Mavers the whole time. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry Mathers. Um, and you know his his guy who played Tony Dow, who played his brother on the show. Um, he's quite a successful artist as uh -huh. well. He lives in California and. Um, He's really a, a great artist. So, you know, like artists, like painting, drawing. Yeah, he's a sculptor. Um, but Jerry Mathers, I mean, if you, I love those old shows. I watch them on the, like, um, Antenna TV and stuff like that we have here. We have the old stations, and um, they're just really fun. You know, they're black and white. Brandy and I were talking about uh, the Andy Griffith show. Yeah, I yeah. remember watching the Andy Griffith show. You know what TiVo just said? He goes, good Lord, I just watched Leave it to Beaver last night. <laughs> Man, that's a massive dose of reality here. <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, they are showing them a lot now. They're showing Leave it to Beaver and, like, All in the Family and all those black and white shows, I Love Lucy. So um, they're still good shows, and they, I, I think Jerry Mathers is, like, 65 now, so everybody grows up. Speaking of I Love Lucy, I yes. used to watch that, too. I love I Love Lucy. And I have a couple friends that have never seen it, and that I'm just surprised because I used to watch that a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, I watched it on reruns. Did you ever watch The Twilight Zone? The old yeah, ones? my grandma's like totally about I love all, the toilet. all of those kinds of things. So yeah, but so I guess when you're surprised that I don't know certain people, I was surprised when they didn't know I love Lucy. So I understand right. where you're coming from. So, so you gotta just yeah, I love Lucy. All right, Perry Mason, very interesting. Oh, thank you, Viv. Um, I know Perry Mason, Tivo. I just can't get into Perry Mason, but I'm not a big cop show fan. I don't know who Perry Mason is, or oh, is that the name of a show? Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. He <laughs> solves crimes. I don't know what oh, it is. Okay. Um, okay. So we are going to go to a really quick break, and then we'll have a Perry Mason, and then we'll have events coming right after this. Some cool clips, too. Stay tuned. <laughs> wow. Well, welcome back. That was a quick break because... Sweet Honey was asking which one was the kid, Eddie, and his little sister, Eddie's family. I think it was Family Affair. I'm not sure though. Family Affair. Now, if nowadays, if we had a show called Family Affair, we'd think something totally different, than, right? Yeah, it's Brian. <laughs> That'd be a reality Richard, show. Maybe? I don't know. All right, so what's going on? Okay, so you guys all should have by now liked our Facebook page, LoadedTV.com, and if you did, you would have saw this oh. teaser and some pictures. I went to um, Safe Shot indoor shooting range yesterday. And I got to shoot a fully automatic handgun, like a gun. It was absolutely wild. Um, so we're going to show you a little tiny teaser of that, and we will show the whole clip on Monday. So check out the clip. Let us know what you think of the clip, and then we'll be back for more events. <laughs> okay. Super fast. Okay. Um, I don't know. That was a super, super short. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Mama, sorry, guys. Neighbor. Yeah. She's sorry. reading the comics. So we're gonna. <laughs> um. Okay. So, have you ever shot a fully automatic gun? Me. Sorry, neither. I'm not a big gun you fan. But I don't know. I mean, I know there's a lot. I'm a Democrat. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people out there that have totally different, you know, like, opinions on this. I don't think people this. should not have guns. I just think, why do you need a semi-automatic The semi-automatic, I think you need, if the government decides to overtake us or oh, zombies, yeah. then we'll be prepared. <laughs> if you if you are thinking about all those things, you're not concentrating enough on just your regular life and being around the people that you love. If all you think about is guns, sorry, see, I, I'm going to get myself have, in trouble no, with this. No, it's true. I don't have a, semi, a fully or semi-automatic, and honestly, I wouldn't own one. I don't see a need for it. I think they're really scary, 
But at the same time, if you get overthrown by the government or zombies, how aren't you going to like really want to be protected by a fully one automatic? one gun in your home is one thing. My I grew up around guns. My dad is an avid hunter, and I was around that my whole life. But. I feel like semi-automatic weapons, and I know people are going to disagree with me, are just ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like it's really like, why do you need that? Do you have a small weenie? I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, what do you use them for? Just for fun, I guess? But, um, yeah, there's a b ban going on on these things. Well, right? we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. But, yes, this was that safe shot. And, oh. Top Shot Mel, to answer your question, yes, that was the guy from Top Shot. His name is Gary, and we will have him on the show to talk about. He has a lot of interesting stories to talk to you guys about, but yeah, yeah. I love him. It's a big, big debate right now, so we are going to have more from Top Shot. That is a very safe environment. Um, I don't... Uh, see, Oh, I got problems with it, but... I, People it's only know. very them. iffy. Yeah, it's so back and forth on the fence. But okay, guess what? So what? I had a zombie target. Okay. And then Stuart did too. And I did so much better than Stuart. I nailed the body. I got at least two headshots and I nailed the body every time except for once. Yeah, yeah. Stuart, on the other hand, we'll have to bring up and show you. He never even got the face, the head, or the brain, or the You face gotta get one. the head because then, he missed the, body then the zombie doesn't die. But I nailed that zombie. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's awesome. All right, a couple, uh, we just got a few more minutes. So lots going on um, this weekend, a ton of things. Um, Styx is in town uh, tomorrow night, and they sing, like, come sail away, come sail. Okay, sorry. They're at the Silver Legacy at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. It's 5750 and 7250. You can go to silverlegacyreno.com. Um, some friends of mine over at the Reno Ta Tahoe Comedy, do you know Bobby Slayton? Well, he's this funny comedian. He's going to be there, um, and one of my friends, Emily, um, is also going to be um, doing some comedy opening up. So that is going to be Friday and Saturday at the Pioneer Underground, 9.30 p.m. There you go. All right, Stuart. They, <laughs> they think that you were just being nice and that you're a great shot. I just, I, I just messaged my friend. So what we have to do is that we're going to go up to the mountains and we're going to shoot some things, and I'm going to prove to you that I'm a better shot than Stuart. Natalie, you want to come? Sure. All right, we're going to do it. As long as it's not semi-automatic. No, 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 no. Otherwise, no, I can, I can hang. <laughs> All right, we're going to do that. I can hang. TF2, you guys, is March 7th. Don't yes. buy tickets. And guess what? I'm going to get an interview with them. LoadedTV.com is going to be interviewing Tiesto. Awesome. Like the number one DJ in the world. When is that again? March, March 7th. Buy awesome. our tickets. And you know what? Send us questions for Tiesto. That's my sure. weekend birthday. Birthday weekend. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. Let's uh -oh. do Tiesto. Yeah, let's oh, go. So, um, mail, email us questions, please. Please. I'm just going to start this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm I, kidding. I thought, I, I was just thinking that. Nobody heard I was me. already thinking I'm that. only kidding. All right, so <laughs> that's, that's, that's March that's 7th. That's the first thing that went through my mind. Oh, my goodness. We are a girl talking right now. Yeah. Okay, you guys, every Thursday night we have a show that we film live called Mustang After Dark. It's pretty it's cool. It's an adult show, so make sure yeah, no the kids. kids are in bed. But it is 8 to 9 p.m. on Thursday night. That specific standard time. I was looking down on you guys. Oh, you were? I had a camera right there on me, and it's like above your shoulders looking down on you. Oh, <laughs> being bad girls. No, we're just gonna we're just gonna party for my birthday. We're gonna go see Tiesto. So don't we're forget to watch the um, weekend. Um, the night of Tiesto. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. To. Yeah. So is that it? Um, Tom? Um, no, it's here at awesome. the event center. Awesome. So cool. All right. Is Amy looking to see if you still... Oh, we don't know that. Okay. Okay. You guys... <laughs> oh, it's already 10 o'clock. You know what we'll do? Do you have any more events that you want to talk about? No. All right. We're going to end with an SPCA clip for cool. the little puppy. Her name is Chloe, and she has a broken leg. Cool. And she's only is one and a half pounds. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Okay. And she's a little chihuahua, so, and she needs your guys' help. So we're going to throw to that. Like us on Facebook. Yep. Thank you so much. And that shooting um, the, of the 
fully automatic that I was doing. It's yes. going to be on Monday. Show. Monday, Monday, Monday. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow as well. We're going to have uh, Oscar and Dave with movie reviews. We're going to have Tina on with makeup and Joseph with fashion. It's jam packed tomorrow, so we'll see them. SPCA coming up. Don't forget tonight. No, don't show though, so. Kids to bed. 8 to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. See you guys tomorrow morning. Bye. Make it a great day. I'm Brandi DeQuinn. I am here at the SPCA, and I'm joined by Elizabeth, and she's the operations manager. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm great. I would love to know about your little friend here. This is Chloe. She came to us last week with a broken leg, and we took her to our vet who pinned it this weekend and set her straight, and she returned to the shelter this morning. So we're going to watch it and take care of her before we put her up for adoption. How old is little Chloe? Chloe is still a puppy. She's a toy chihuahua, and she's only five and a half months old. So she came here with the broken leg? Yes, yes. And this is an example of what we do going above and beyond. Mm -hmm. For animals, we try our best to do what we can. For animals that come in under uh, unusual and sad circumstances yeah. and try to repair it. She will be put up for adoption and go in seconds. I'm sure of that. And she's very sweet and very cute. This must cost a lot of money, what you guys do to help the dogs here. Um, what about her case? Yes. Veterinary costs add up, as we all know, with our personal animals. To repair her leg and get her off and going will be $1,500. So we're asking folks to contribute to just her case, Chloe, and you can go to spcanevada.org, our website, and go to donations, and it'll lead you to the correct place to donate specifically for her. Oh, well, that's really nice. I mean, if you guys can't adopt a dog, but you want to do something to help an injured puppy out, I mean, that's something great that they could do. Oh, absolutely. There are many, many ways to help out all the animals here at the shelter, and specifically cases like this that come up. So how long has she been here at your shelter? She just came in on Friday. Last Friday. Friday. And then she had to get the cast on. And yes, she went. We zipped her right over to our offside vet who took care of her and pinned her leg. We're trying to save the leg and avoid amputation. So this is the first step. So we think it's going to work. And uh, I guess a few more, a couple more weeks, and we'll see what happens. So when will she be available for adoption? We're waiting to see how her leg sets. But at this time, it might be four to six weeks. Okay, so she's going she's gonna to still be small, so you recommend who adopts her? Yes. I would say because she's so delicate and sweet, and um, as you can see, look how little and skinny her legs are. She had it shaved here. I would say to a home, probably not with small children. Uh, they're so easy to trip over, little dogs like this. And then watch how many other animals you have in the yes. house. Right now I have five cats and a puppy. So that might not be the best environment just because they might bully her. So I would say either a quiet home, maybe retired couple, or couples that probably don't have young children or older children. All right, so if you guys want to check out little Chloe here and help her out, all the information is going to be right there on the screen. So thank you so much. You're very <laughs> welcome. Thank you.